is Joseph Spencer. From May 1970 to October 1997, I served the United States government as a top secret operative, but not in a category that is commonly known or understood. I was known as a man in black. Following seven years acting as a counterintelligence agent for the CIA, I was recruited for a new assignment that entailed working with thin, above top secret operations. I was aware of the black budget projects, but never knew the context of them due to their high level of secrecy. Even the president was denied access to their inner workings. Annually, billions of dollars are poured into black projects, which operate without any supervision or intrusion. They have full autonomy. The operations deal primarily with advancing military technologies, most of which have been reverse engineered from recovered alien spacecrafts that had either crashed or were shot down by our military. The public, sadly, will never, ever have knowledge of these operations. This transition in my life happened in 1970. The senior black project director was William T. Latham, who had worked under CIA Executive Director Richard Schlesinger. Latham stated that I was the perfect candidate for my new position. I was a foster child, and I had no connections to existing relatives. I had no friends or social life. It was easy for them to erase my past and provide me with a new identity. I gave myself to them as a priest would to his God. But first, my mind had to be erased. I was injected with various forms of mind-altering drugs, LSD, heroin, mescaline, morphine, sodium pentothal, and more. Drug-induced hypnosis followed with anti-grade and retrograde amnesia. The goal was to program me to do two things, kill and forget. After nine months of programming, I had become a man in black. What I later discovered was that not all the men in black were human. About a third were alien hybrids. Their distinctive feature was the absence of whites in their eyes, giving the impression of empty eye sockets. This unsettled me, and it took months to adjust to, to the reality of alien integration. My assignments largely dealt with UFO sightings and crash sites. In August of 1971, I witnessed my first UFO crash site just north of Edwards Air Force Base in California. Inside the craft were three gray humanoids, two dead, one still alive. Also in the craft was a human female abductee. The alien humanoids were transported to the base, but two witnesses had arrived before us and took several photographs. The first surrendered his camera, but the second fled. When we apprehended him, he resisted, and I was ordered to silence him, which I did. The killing of witnesses was executed with a wand that acted very much like today's taser, but the voltage from the wand would cause immediate cardiac arrest the victim's death would be attributed to natural causes. We silenced countless victims, not only men, but women of all ages and even teenagers. The following day, after each kill, our memories were reset so we would have no recollection of the murders. A good majority of the victims were ufologists and whistleblowers. Among the ufologists I personally silenced were Paul William Cooper, Milton Vigay, Claude Monroe, Anthony Vargas, and noted documentarian Samantha Willis. When my wand malfunctioned with Samantha, I resorted to strangulation. She fought for her life for almost two minutes. In recalling this act, I stared into her pleading eyes for the entire duration with absolutely no remorse, guilt, or feelings. That was how effective the mind conditioning was. And it's her face that haunts my dreams more than anyone's to this day. So they stuffed out a documentarian? Yep. Well, that's not good to hear. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're, we're going to move on. In 1954, Dwight Eisenhower was signed what's known as the Granada Treaty with the Alien Great Race. In exchange for shared alien technologies, 
The Greys are allowed to abduct a number of humans annually for medical examination. The Greys also demanded anonymity from the public. A short time later, human technology took a giant leap forward with circuit chips, fiber optics, and lasers. The Grotto Treaty is still active today, but the number of human abductions has increased despite objections from the world governments. Now, the really interesting part. Every year, at least 8 million children go missing in the world. I can attest that one third of them are abducted by government operatives and transported to any one of the 1,477 underground military installations on the planet. What if I told you that these migrants are being allowed in without being vaccinated and are being bused to what we call dumbs? underground military bases never to be seen again would you believe me then imprisoned for the remainder of their lives the children were subjected to biological and genetic experiments dissections and mutilations performed not by human scientists but an alien gray species during my stay at the vanguard underground base north of phoenix arizona I witnessed many of these procedures. Because there's no form of anesthesia administered to the young patients, the halls reverberated with the screams of tortured children from morning to night. The ones that perished were incinerated in the installation's crematorium. My point of contact at this base was Lieutenant Colonel Charles D. Leninger, and he was a human alien hybrid. 